Hi, this is Dr. Mary Kathleen Figaro coming to you from the Thyroid Channel. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time, remember that this is for educational purposes. If you have specific thyroid complaints, please discuss with a local endocrinologist. Today we'll be discussing Hashimoto's thyroiditis and fertility. As you may know, uh, about 15% of women find themselves infertile when they start to try to have a baby. And there can be very many different causes for it that are related to the woman. Uh, sometimes it, it is said in the literature that 40% of the time it's the woman, 40% of the time it's the man, and then in between there's 20% um, where it's unknown what the cause of infertility is. But if it's been determined that the man is fertile and the woman is infertile and trying to get pregnant, sometimes thyroid fa factors into the inability to either become pregnant or maintain pregnancy. And the vast majority of the time that the association was, is with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. A minority of the time, hyperthyroidism that's undiagnosed can also make fertility uh, impossible. However, Hashimoto's is much more common than Graves' disease, and um, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is associated and is one of the reasons and causes for subfertility in women. So let's talk about the three categories of women there are. Those are, that have high antibodies but have normal thyroid function. Those that have antibodies, positive or negative, but have a high normal thy thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH and those that have actual hypothyroidism that's being treated. And each of these populations is slightly different and the causes for infertility are slightly different. So people who have high antibodies sometimes find it difficult to get pregnant. And it's very hard to control high antibodies since uh, it is an autoimmune disease and it is hard to control a person's uh, immune system. Often changes in diet, uh, changes in, in stress levels and lowering stress, and uh, loss of weight can help in the population that has just high antibodies and has normal TSH. And normal can be different for trying to get pregnant versus not trying to get pregnant. While normals go all the way to 4.7 in some labs for uh, thyroid for TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, if you have positive antibodies and you're trying to get pregnant, the recommendation from American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, or ACOG, is that you have a TSH less than 2.5. So most fertility uh, institutions will check you for thyroid function and will try to maintain your TSH less than 2.5. So what if you do just have a high TSH but you have not had any thyroid disease and it's found as a, a workup for your cause for infertility? Well, as I just said, um, I think your TSH should probably be kept under 2.5 because that's what the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends. There have been some studies that show that there's uh, no no damage to the child uh, if in the if the pregnancy continues and the free T4 stays in the upper third range um, of normal. But there is also some studies suggesting that TSH being high can lead to some problems with uh, the outcomes of pregnancy. And for safety's sake, uh, the the use of levothyroxine in early pregnancy to help mitigate any abnormalities with a fetus and to help maintain a pregnancy, such as progesterone is used in infertility is often used by uh, specialists who are specialists in infertility. So the third category is treated thyroid. So you know you have hypothyroidism and you're being treated. Well, uh, in that case, uh, since ACOG's recommendation is to keep a TSH less than 2.5, and normal thyroid stimulating hormone in the first trimester of pregnancy go all the way down to 0.1, the recommendation is to keep your TSH low and um, to help make sure that your baby has enough thyroid. Around 13 weeks of gestation, the uh, fetus starts to get its own thyroid function. So it's not dependent on, on, as much on the mother's thyroid hormone levels. And by 15, 16 weeks, the thyroid of the fetus has matured. So the most uh, urgent time to make sure that the thyroid is well treated is in the th first trimester when some women do not even know they're pregnant. It's important that if you have known thyroid disease that you visit your endocrinologist or other specialist or, or other primary care physician or provider who's taking care of your thyroid and um, uh, make sure that your thyroid is well controlled before you attempt pregnancy to help avoid early uh, miscarriages, early loss of pregnancies, or uh, in some studies, a lower IQ in the, in the infant when it is born. So in summary, uh, there are three categories of women who have thyroid abnormalities that may uh, have an impact on fertility and pregnancy and maintaining pregnancy and delivering a healthy baby. And those are those who have high antibodies where not much can be done besides changes in diet and, and stress levels, uh, or not much can be done by physicians. <laughs> uh, high TSH where the TSH can be brought down 
even during the first part of the pregnancy, and then the levothyroxine can be stopped uh, with consultation with the physician and the patient. And then treated hypothyroidism, where tight control is of importance even before the attempt to get pregnant, and certainly is important after pregnancy starts. Thanks for listening. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe below. Uh, new videos every Friday.